know Terrence has been a fifth year senior for us. Five years, uh, he was in the Army before coming here. Uh, Coach Phelps recruited him out of the Army straight to here, so he came in as an older kid. Uh, freshman of the year when he was a freshman, start of his sophomore year, blows his ACL two games in. Uh, so John Ellis, our senior point guard, uh, he's been here for four years. Probably one of the toughest kids I've coached in 13 years of doing this. Uh, he, he just plays his heart out every time he's on the floor. And, and if you've seen him play, I, I don't think anyone can ever question his effort. He's five foot seven, and you wouldn't think it if you saw him play. Uh, we constantly put him on the other team's best player, and, and, and really that starts with him, uh, that intensity level. So when he brings it, we're usually pretty good on that end. So, uh, you know, he's been a big piece of what we've done these last few years. Me. He's been very low maintenance. Uh, he makes my job a lot easier. You know, I was talking to Coach Danny before we even started today, and you know, you guys would be amazed how little of coaching we get to do each day because we're dealing with so much other stuff every day. Uh, but Terrence, I don't have to deal with anything. You know, it's he, he's self-sufficient. Uh, he's already graduated. He got his degree last May in criminal justice. He's going to have a master's in criminology uh, this May. Uh, you know, as a junior last year, he was on pace to be an All-American again. Uh, blows his ACL the first week he's mad about that. Uh, but we got him back, you know, came back from that. He was preseason All-American this year uh, in Street and Smith Magazine. You know, I could go on and on about him. He's a special kid. You know, he's one of those where you say, hey, I'll probably learn more from him than he has uh, from me. My brother, my brother had a big impact because he was in the military at the time. And I didn't get recruited out of high school to play basketball. And I know I didn't want to stay home because it's not a great neighborhood. I didn't want to go down the wrong path. So my brother, my brother just, uh, he influenced me to, you know, to go to the Army. Back, my stepdad, he always encouraged me and my twin brother and my oldest brother to join. Um, and of course, we never had a passion for that at all. It was never part of the plan. We all wanted to play the sport that we played. Um, so with that being said, I had no desire to go at all. Then my oldest brother went. Um, and I still had no desire. And then my senior year, I had a great year at Woodstock High School, um, but I didn't get the offers that I wanted to get. Um, so immediately I decided I would join, because I talked to the recruiters before I was sure of it, but I talked to the recruiters and when he told me I could play basketball while progressing in you know, the job I wanted to do, um, being paid, of course, having a job. Um, I said I would go. Um, when I got to Fort Bliss, uh, the first thing I did when I got into my barracks was go find a gym. Um, me and my roommate, who I didn't know at the time, but me and him both went, you know, we just put up some shots. Um, and then I seen a flyer that day that said post-team tryouts was on such and such date at a gym that I had no idea where that was at. So then I went to do some more recon and trying to find that gym. I didn't want to miss that tryout, so I went to that tryout, and from there it was really history. I, I made the team, and I played every game, every travel tournament, every season after that. So I was an okay player to begin with because I was just coming out of high school, you know. So I felt I was I was okay because then we went through basic training, went through advanced individual training. And I wasn't touching the basketball at all, and when I got there, I realized how much I loved the game. I was always in the gym. And at the, I got the nickname Rondo. People call me Rondo a lot, and it was, it was because I couldn't shoot at all. So I got tired of being called Rondo, and I, on Friday nights, I would just go in the gym, because we off on weekends. Friday nights, I would go in the gym, play basketball, just work on my shot, work on my shot, work on my craft. And I, that's when I realized I love this game, because I'm doing it, and I don't even have to do it. I have work Monday. I'm not going to work to play basketball Monday. I'm going back to my regular job on Monday. But I just wanted to be that good at the time, at the time, and still right now. Rates and things like that. Coming out of high school, I really wanted to be food service. Like I had a real big passion for that. Um, and when I found out I could do that in the military and learn and take classes at the higher level from their dollars, and I was like, why not? And then I learned I could play basketball as well. 
So that was a gimme. Um, so I took that, I did food service. Uh, we had a lot of early hours, long days. Um, and when we got off, typical job is a five to nine. Um, I had a great unit where they let me leave early for practice and stuff like that. Um, take four days and stuff for travel tournaments and things like that. But that was basically it. It was prepare meals and, and for all the, the soldiers on base, uh, off base, doing certain missions and things like that. And if I wasn't doing that, then I was playing basketball and traveling and playing with the post team. Well, uh, I, was a, uh, I was a 92 Alpha. It was a supply, it was a supply. So I worked with a lot of mechanics. But I worked in the motor pool most of the time with, with the mechanics. And I was in charge of millions of dollars and fixing tanks and Humvees and everything of that nature. So uh, that, was, that was most of my tour in the Army with that. Because it was a brand new unit. It was a brand new unit. And it was just built in, so it was a lot of money being put in four people's hands. And I was one of them to order the tanks, order everything for, for that unit at the time. So. Um, El Paso was greater than I thought it would be. Uh, when I got my orders, when I was in Fort Lee, um, Virginia, I was like, there's no way I'm going to El Paso. That's Mexico. Like, I've never, ever once thought I'd be in Mexico in my life. Um, and it's right on the border. And we see the border of Juarez every single day. Um, it's dusty. It's really sunny. Um, hardly ever any clouds. You get more dust storms than any other storm. Um, but it was great. Uh, the people are great. The area is great. Um, the culture is great. It's a little bit different. I know. The food was great, though. I, I experienced great, like, true Mexican food. But being there four years, I got tired of it. But, but uh, around my third year there, the the whole it started to, it started to expand. The whole the whole base started to expand way more. It became bigger and bigger. Like right now, it's probably one of the best bases in our. In I met Terrence, I don't know, it might have been the first season, but it wasn't the first day. He didn't go to tryouts. Um, oh, that was a funny day. Uh, Terrence was in the gym that we had practice at, and um, he was shooting. There's three courts, basically like our gym. But when you walk in, you hit the first court, and that's where everyone who's not part of the team, I guess, is playing, just a bunch of soldiers or civilians or whatever is playing but you have to walk past the first two courts to get to the third court where we practice so i heard a lot about terrence before i ever met him and instantly we didn't like each other and we never met each other um, because i was young he was young and military you get a lot of older guys so we were both so talented that they were like oh man john he's really good blah 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 but you haven't met terrence yet this is how this is how it came along. So I'm like, I'm like Terrence. I'm like, forget that dude. I don't know him, and you know, I don't want to know him. So we were on two different sides of post, and the same thing was happening for him. They were like, oh, I don't know him. So practice was funny because I walked in and I instantly knew who Terrence was, who Rondo was. So I'm like, what's up, man? I said, you're not gonna come try out for practice. He was like, <laughs> he's like, no, not unless I can have your spot. So I'm like. Well, I guess you're gonna be down here shooting with these bums then. <laughs> so I'm like, my spot is on lockdown. So I kept walking, I went to practice, and he, he continued to shoot. And one day, it was a Saturday morning, we always played basketball at a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a gym. That was just an army thing, wake up early. We always be trained to get up early, so why not get up early on a Saturday and play basketball? That, that morning, that Saturday morning, it was all the talk, and it was, everyone was finally talking like, oh, okay, they finally gonna play each other, they finally gonna play each other. So we kept our cool as much as we could, but inside we knew like, I do not want this dude to show me up today. The game starts, you check the ball up, uh, I, I got the ball, he yells out, I got Rondo. And I'm like, like, no one has ever called me out like this, you know, so, you know, I was like, okay, okay, here, here we go. So like, my team had the ball first, I checked it with him, I passed it, they gave it right back to me. <laughs> like, they wanted me to go at him. So then, and as soon as he got it back, he attacked me, attacked me, he blew right past me, he's fast. So I go by him, he says he let, he let me go by him, but I go by him and I go up for a layup, 
he blocks my shot off the backboard instantly. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, who is this dude? <laughs> but honestly, that is the only thing I remember about that game because I don't even think I scored or he scored. I don't. Even, we can't even remember who won the game because we were so focused on each other that game. So may, maybe you can ask him. Maybe he could tell you. Don't let him lie though. He could probably tell you who won the game and what happened after that. But honestly, I, all I remember is that block because I had never jumped that high before, and I figured I was like. This guy's already bringing the best out of me, and I don't even know it. So. And then it was history from there. We, you know, we talked after, laughed a lot, hung out a lot after that. Uh, we became the best of friends in the school. When he finally joined the team, me and him became really close. Uh, worked out a lot together and stuff like that. Uh, hung out a lot off the court. And then me and him is, is weird because we didn't play a lot in the beginning. There were two older guards and then higher ranking guards. So that rank kind of takes priority as well, even off the court. Um, so two guys that was ahead of us that were not better than us, but we kept our cool and we sat at the end of the bench and we cheered our team on and we talked a lot and practice was intense because me and him was always on the same team. So we just decided we would go at those two guys um, and just try and prove our worth for the team. Um, so eventually we got our shot, we were in um, Vegas, I believe, and our team was down big and our coach finally threw us in. I think we were down like 18 or something. He threw us in the game and we brought it back and it was up two. And then he subbed us back out like coaches normally do and try and let his guards finish the game. But after that, um, I guess he's seen that we were more than just two backup guards. So when me and him started playing more, we earned starting positions. Uh, we started winning more games. Um, that was the year that we ended up winning a national championship uh, for the military. I think that was 2013-14. Um, started with the other team, uh, with the on base team. I played for the base team, and we won the national championship. And it was Coach Coach Riley we called him Chief because he was the chief in the army. Our coach for the military used to play with Dion Phelps, coach prior to Vinay. Um, and he asked us all, he was like, well, how many of you guys are serious about playing basketball and would like to try and play at the next level? So it was a couple of us that raised our hand and he started to record practice after that and send it out to the people that he knew, um, try and just post things on Twitter and stuff like that, just that, you know, military soldiers who have eligibility, four years of eligibility, plus a GI Bill, go to school for free, you know, if anybody's out there interested. So. He, uh, he would always tell me he could get me into college, and I just thought he would always be talking. And he knew Coach Phelps, the coach at the time over here. And Coach Phelps came and watched me in San Antonio to play in the national, to play in the national championship in the Army. And he liked, he liked what he saw, and he offered me a scholarship, and the Army let me out. Because uh, the Army has something called once in a lifetime, and that's a once in a lifetime deal. That's when you can get that. The Army released me, and came to see you. So Coach Phelps, he bid on it because he had another friend, uh, Coach Manny, who used to coach at Hanks High School, where we actually all worked out in our off time. It was really weird how the, everyone tied into that. Um, and coach Manny had nothing but great things to say about us. So Coach Phelps came out there and stayed with him for a weekend and then came and watched us play a little bit in the open gym out there. So after one of those days, he sat and talked with me and Terrence and uh, that year, Terrence had, his time was up. He had a couple months left on his contract. So he had a decision to make. I had another year on my contract. Um, so Terrence went, long story short, Terrence went. I kept up with him while I served my last year. Um, he told me nothing but good things about here um, that I should do it. So when my time was coming up where his was, uh, I decided to do it as well. And, and that's how we got here, um, just to string of guys that knew each other from the past. Just the discipline and the holding everyone accountable. You know, when people, when guys on the team complain about stuff that has to get done, I just look at them and be like, no matter what, that has to get done. And it won't go away. I learned that in the Army, like when a, when a mission is, is put, up, put in your face, you have, to, you have to do the mission. The mission has to be complete. So there's no point complaining about it or nothing. So it helps me a lot. Like when I first came here, my freshman year, I took an 8 a.m. class. People said people said I was crazy, but I was used to getting up early at like five in the morning. 
So I was always on time for my 8 a.m. every single every single day. But once the civilian life kicked in, I never took an 8 a.m. again. So. <laughs> so being on time with places, being accountable, holding yourself and other people accountable for a lot of different things. Um, because in the, in the military, you don't you don't get as many chances as you get in school, and, the, and then in the real world, you don't get as many chances. So just that alone, going through this battle with basketball and school and being on time for things and accountable for things, uh, for your own actions, uh, doing a bunch of things that you don't want to do, that you don't have to get done, um, that just puts you right back into the military. You wake up doing things you don't want to do at all, that you have to do. So I think that that was great. Um, I've always said since I joined that I wish everybody at least had to join for a year or two because doing that, like I said, you just, you just, you grow up really quick. I was 18, I was 17, 18 years old and had to grow up just like that. Um, so it was, yeah, that was definitely a plus um, to have under, under my belt coming into college. I'm currently now in mass communication advertising. Um, I switched from the business school uh, my sophomore year, uh, probably at the break, I think it was my sophomore year. Um, and now I think it will help me with advertising because my mom is, she's in that field. Um, she's a professional business coach. She helps a lot of people in the Atlanta area. Well, five different countries really, but she's in the Atlanta area in Georgia. Um, she has a lot of clientele that's doing a lot of startup businesses who needs help, uh, whether it be the business cards or starting a website or you know, flyers or you know things like that that ad agencies um, can help with. You know I'm trying to have a one-stop shop agency where I can help you with all of those small things um, and hopefully turn those small things into a large clientele base and you know have that a big thing. So my mom is currently helping me try and start up my own agency uh, after I graduate. So I think you know I think that the help from the mass communication department got me in the right direction plus her help. I'm studying criminal justice right now. I have my bachelor's already and uh, not well now I'm studying criminology in graduate school and being being that I was in the army and I did a lot of security in the army and the army is basically you know security you know serving the country securing. I figured uh, that that's going to help me a lot with the it's gonna help me skip a lot of the, the slow process with like, cause I wanted to do I wanted to do something federal, like DEA and something like that, so I wouldn't have to go through all that extra stuff because of my military background and having a, a security clearance. I still have a security clearance. We we'll go with the game winner at, at St. Greg's. Uh, that was my first game winner. I had a, I had maybe two other opportunities here in the three and a half years for a game winner. And I got one to drop, so I'm one for three. Uh, St. Greg's, we were down one, I believe. Had to go full court. Uh, coach drew up a play called Kansas. And they didn't guard us the way we expected them to guard us, which gave me a full steam ahead, running down the court. And I got to my strong side, my left side, and threw it up at the buzzer. And it went in, my team went crazy, the crowd went crazy. It was a great feeling. Uh, that was probably the memory I'm gonna go with the most. Uh, well, knowing the knowing the, the stage I'm on, when you walk into our gym, you'll know like, this, is, this isn't just another basketball gym. It's like, it's an honest 64, 65 national championships, one where, and I've, I've really noticed when other teams walk in our gym, the first thing they do is look up. And they're amazed by how many national championships, how many banners they see. So playing over here has been an honor, and it's taught me like you know like to be at a high, to be at a high level at all times. Because every time someone walks in here, they want to beat you. This isn't another game for them. It's it's not another game. It's like it's OCU. So that's a great that is, and it's a great feeling for that too.